Hello, Titanic Animations here, and today I'm going to show you how to do a fluid simulation with a moving object that's interacting with the fluid and creating, let's do a foam on top of that, like a foam particle system. So this is a default blender scene. Believe it or not, I'm not going to delete the default cube. I'm just going to scale it up by a factor of 10, move it up and add a basic little plane. This will be our ground floor. And this cube is gonna be our domain. Let's duplicate the cube and scale it down on the Z axis. Try that again. <laughs> scale it down on the Z axis. That's good. And yeah. And now we need an object. So, oh, let's make a funnel. So I'm gonna add in a cylinder, come in here. And I'm just gonna, this isn't gonna be a super highly detailed thing. It's just for demonstration purposes only. So bear with me for a moment. And no. Okay, and one more. And let me just move this to here. That way, yeah, it's pivoting from the bottom. And now let me shade this thing. So going to just add two materials and make one of them black to be the top of the funnel make the other one like a pinkish chamois color and give me this collect as a sign and there we go now we have our funnel so Let's put this in the center. You never want to start off with the object inside of the fluid. I find that that just creates a whole lot of problems. So if you just put it right above the top of the fluid, you should be good. And we want space for it to move around, so kind of right there. And just going to, let's say it takes two seconds to fall, that'll be frame 48 and we want it to fall all the way forward maybe move down a little bit and let's have some dynamics going on where it maybe rotates a little bit when it falls luck and let's give it one more second to go before it totally falls down into the fluid Okay, let me just replay this, make sure it's going to look halfway decent. Not so much, but for the purposes of a tutorial, it is fine. So, now we need to do a couple more things. I'm going to add in another cube and move this way out of sight, scale it down a little bit. And just to make things a little easier, let's name it Particle. And cursor to selected. Let's add an icosphere. Move that beside the particle. And let's call this Foam. And now we are almost ready to go. So this is going to be your domain. This is going to be like a pool of water that's just sitting here for the funnel to fall into it this is going to be your particle and this is the actual particle that we're going to use it's like an object that we're going to replace the particles with if that makes sense so now we need to apply the settings to everything so we're going to select our domain make it a domain the pool of water you can have this as an inflow object or anything i'm just going to select fluid it doesn't really need an initial velocity since it's just going to be sitting there and the funnel itself let's name it as an obstacle 
whenever something is moving I do like to use a volume initialization of both and make sure if your object is moving that you check this little export animated mesh box or else Blender will not treat it as a moving object, a static object. The last thing that we're going to do is select our little particle cube, fluid, and particle. Make sure you have floats selected. And one thing you might notice is that this has a cache on it, as does, if I come down here on the domain, this. Now this is a temporary folder and it is by default wherever you've installed Blender 2 on your computer. It's a little temporary folder. Every single time that you make a new particle simulation or a fluid simulation, it's going to overwrite this baked data here. So I would suggest making a folder on your computer. You can call it particles, fluid simulations, whatever you want to do. And every time that you do a bake for a new Blender file, save it into a new folder that way you don't wind up getting your stuff overridden and you can come back to it at a later time and pick up right where you left off so i'm just going to save that now and i'll be back with you in a moment and i'm back so again all i've done is just saved it to a random file on my com computer and external hard drive and make sure that this cache file for your domain is the same exact cache file for the particle cube the same folder, same file, you can come over here, control C, and come over here, and control V, just to make absolutely sure, because if it's not, it's not going to work properly. Okay, so I normally put this up to final. I know just from default that a 250 frame animation is 10.4 seconds. Let's see, I always use a subdivision of one, you can go as high as three or four. I wouldn't recommend it though, because especially when you use higher resolutions, these subdivisions is going to exponentially increase the amount of time that it takes for your fluid simulation to bake. So for example, I could turn this up to 300 and it could take an hour. But if I leave the settings the exact same and use a subdivision of three or four, it could take 12, 15 hours to do. So never go higher than three or four. You'll thank me later. The last thing, is, I'm gonna leave tracer at zero and just leave generate on one. This is just telling Blender, as it says, amount of particles to generate zero off, normal one, and more than one equals more. So I'm just gonna leave it on one for now. Here you can change it, you want honey, oil, water, I'm just going to click on water, and I'm not going to fiddle around with the gravity at all. So I think I've got it all set up, and I'm going to bake it, and I'll come back at when the bake is finished. Alright, so the bake just finished, and now you can see that the domain cube has kind of deformed inside of the fluid box that we built, and you don't really want this fluid box showing up in the render because it's going to hide your fluid. So just, again, do not select the domain. Select the foam, the inflow, whatever you want. Come down here in your visibility tab and just click. I'm, an, I'm actually just gonna do this too. Make sure you have show and renders deselected. That way it'll just be invisible. So the next thing, I'm going to set this to smooth just so that it's nice and let's play this through and see how it looks and hey we have interactions now one thing I will note I did this because I have a high processing power in my computer some of you will not be able to play this in real time at all because it's gonna crash your computer never click play right after your bake is done especially when you're using particles one thing you can do is click on your little particle cube and come over into the fluid particles in the particle properties tab click on this open up both of these and on this amount right here you can set this down to 50 that way it will only display 50 amount of 50 percent of the total particles in your scene you may have to go down as far as 10 
depending on the amount of particles that you have. Because I have a really fast computer, I'm just going to leave this on 100. The last thing that you really want to do with setting up your particle system is change this render as from halo to object and use this little eyedropper tool and you can just click on the foam icosphere and you can see now we have little icospheres but they kinda look janky so let's just select that and W shade smooth and let's scale them down a little bit yeah so let's see that is at a really small resolution so I'm just going to let this bake one more time at a higher resolution just to show you how at higher resolutions the more and more particles and foam there will be added. So let me bump this up to 150 and I'll be right back with you. Okay and I'm back. I bumped the resolution up to 150 just so I can show you. Uh, if you'll recall it's been a few minutes for me it's only been a few seconds for you and the resolution of 65 we didn't really have all that many foam particles going on so I believe I had this thing hitting at frame 48 so if I just come over here yeah you'll see there's a lot more foam going on now and if I just play it through there's a lot and there's another problem we need to scale the icosphere down a little bit more so again just select that and press S and let's scale it down to where they're not as overlapping with each other and again make sure if it has lagged your computer you can come over here in the particle thing and just scale this amount down it's going to decrease the amount that you can see here but when you render it it will still be at the full amount so you don't have to worry about losing stuff and rebaking it the last thing that you really need to do is to shade everything and make it look decent so one thing that I'm going to do I'm just going to have a simple little three-point lighting set up I'm gonna leave that one as a white move this one over here let's just make it blue and duplicate it move this one over here and make it yellow that way it looks halfway decent and move this back to frame number one and that looks good so control alt zero that's going to move your camera to wherever your viewpoint is and now we just need to shade the fluid so if you come over here we already have a material most of you are going to want blue water some of you might want green or red or any color of the rainbow I'm just going to use blue the specular is okay we can turn the roughness all the way down I normally get rid of this uh, index of refraction is how the light bends when it is moving through an object water as far as I can tell is about 1.33 and I'm going to turn the transmission all the way to 1 and you'll see that it became almost like a paint or an oil we can fix that by coming down here in the settings and changing the blend mode to alpha blend and I know it doesn't look like it's changed much but that's because we are using Eevee and you have to turn stuff on as you go with Eevee so while I was talking I just turned on spin, screen space refraction and set it to 1 and translucency so we can come up here into the render properties and now you can see all of this stuff that we can turn on so I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion just leave that to default shouldn't bloom is like as you can see with this little point here it just makes stuff glow don't really need that so I'm going to turn it off and you do need to turn on again reflections and make sure that refraction is checked and now you can see that you can see through the fluid uh, shouldn't have to use motion blur you can turn on volumetric shadows if you want to indirect lighting not really gonna mess with that for right now and color management here you can like high contrast and 
Let's go with medium high. That looks decent. So now if you render it, this is pretty much what you're going to see. Let me just turn this down to 720p. Yeah, doesn't look that much exciting. But again, you can come over to frame 48. And this is when stuff starts to show up in the animation. Did we add a material to this? We did not. So I am going to come over here, select the icrosphere, add a material to it, and just leave it as the base uh, white. That way it does have somewhat of a material to it. You can make them green, red, any color of the rainbow. No judgment. So let's move forward a little bit. And now you can see that, render that out. And there is a lot of fluid going on. So I am going, you can render this out. And that is exactly what I'm going to do now. And I will come back to you and show you what it looks like when it is done. Okay, and I'm back. I went ahead and rendered it out. Uh, I did change a few things. I upped the amount of foam that we have because I just wanted a little bit more. I scaled the icosphere down. Otherwise, it's the exact same animation. And I'm just going to play this back for you now and show you what it looks like. And it is going in slow motion, so I do apologize for that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I had a little weird dropping effect going on. But as you can see, there's foam in the water now. And the funnel does indeed interact appropriately. And that is how you have moving objects inside of a blender fluid animation. And you want foam to interact with stuff. Uh, this is Titanic Animations. If you like this, give a thumbs up. If you want to stick around for more, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.